Hello everybody and welcome to another video here at Rudy's Spot. Today we are going to be doing a very short little exercise on something that um, I found very necessary well, uh, while in the process of writing an add-on for Blender. As you guys know, I'm trying to build a Material X um, add-on for Blender so that you can read Material X files that adhere to the specification so that you can move looks between different applications. But right now it's mainly to concentrate on Blender. Um, in the process of doing this, whenever you're starting a project, one of the first things that you usually do is you try to make sure that everything is ready for you to do your work later on. Um, kind of like when you're building a house, you don't just go and start building, right? You have to go ahead and uh, level the ground and make sure that everything's good, everything's level. Basically prepare your working area. Um, that is pretty much what I was doing um, with this project. And while doing that, I just ran into the situation where the Material X uh, binding for Python was not working properly with Blender. So after looking at it a little bit more, I realized, oh, I'm not building against the proper version. So this uh, led me you know, down the path of making everything work. And in the process, I figured this is something that most CDs are going to have to do whenever they're trying to um, use a library or any kinds of bindings inside of their scripts and make sure that they work properly with the DCC application that they're using, be it Maya, Houdini, or whatever. So I figure we'll go ahead and do a quick little demo on how to get this thing to work, and then, um, you know, hopefully you guys will benefit from this. So the first thing we got to do is we have to download the Material X uh, library, right? So just go into Material X here in GitHub. You can search, search for Material X, and you'll be able to find it there. Next thing we're going to do is just click here and download, copy the link that we need to download. And then in a folder which is open, it's usually pretty good to do it there. I'm going to go ahead and just do git clone and then paste our location. So this is going to go ahead and start downloading all of the code into your computer. It's a very small project, so it should be done um, quite soon. Um, we'll just wait a little bit and wait for it to be complete. Um, once it's done, uh, well, well, this is going in the background, the next thing that we have to do is we have to figure out what is the right version of Python that we're going to have to uh, compile this against. Um, like I said, we're going to be using Blender, so the first thing I do is I just go ahead and start Blender. Right? So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Uh, I can just run Blender here from the command line. And we wait for it to pop up. And if I resize this for you guys to see it, let me bring this up here. You guys will see that the first line that Blender gives you here on the Python console is going to tell you what is the right version of Python that you need to use. So in this case, it's 3.5.1. Now. I could probably just use 3.5. The last number on the versioning is usually a micro update. So things should remain compatible from one to the next. But since I am downloading Python very specifically for the purposes of building against this, I'm just going to go ahead and get that version. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and bring up our, our web browser, which I have back here. And then you just go to the Python website, python.org. And in the download section, you should be able to find past releases down here. So if you do a search and just do 3.5.1, you should be able to find the binaries right there, right? So now go ahead and make sure to download the right binaries for your operating system. In this case, I'm using Mac OS. And then once it's done, you should be able to bring up a terminal. Um, let me go ahead and quick blender for now. You should be able to bring up a terminal and just go ahead and type Python 3, right? And that will let you know here on the first line that you actually have the right version installed. Once that is done, I can exit out of here. And usually what I like to do is find out where this Python is, right? Python 3. So there you go. This is going to tell us exactly where Python 3 is. So now, what we need to do is navigate to this location because we're going to need several paths from here to be able to use in our configuration. So if I just do this and then clear really quick, and let's look at the content in here. 
Um, okay. So let's look at the path. Yeah, I'm inside of 3.5. And in here, as you can see, we have uh, lib, bin, and include. We have these three folders which are going to contain very important files that we're going to need to be able to make this work. So, next thing we need to do, we're going to go into the material X folder. And in here, you're going to find a file called CMakeList, which is basically the file that is going to configure the make files that we're going to use to build this library and the bindings. So we're just going to go ahead and open this in an editor. And there's several lines that we need to change here. The first one is going to be this one that reads Material X Build Python. We're going to go ahead and change this last part here from off to on, effectively telling our builder that we need to build the Python binding. Um, then what we need to do is we need to fill in the information in this, uh, these three paths locations right here. right? So first thing it's asking for is the Python executable. So we go here to this other place and we just go into bin and do a list and we see there is where Python 3 is. So if we do pwd to take our path, we're just going to copy and paste that guy in here. Now I know that these other locations are going to be very similar, so I'm just going to go ahead and paste them in here. And we'll do this for the library too. Right? Now we know it's not bin, this is going to be lib, and we know it's not bin, this is going to be include. Right? Now, quick little thing. Um, for the include, you're actually going to need a directory. But for the other ones, you're going to need an actual file. So we know that the file for the binary is going to be called Python 3. So we're just going to do type in here Python 3. And then we need to figure out if the include folder, if that is the right location. Right? Is there anything else additional in the include folder? So if we go up one level, include, we see that there is a folder called Python 3.5m. And then if we list the contents of that, we're going to see that's where all our header files is. So we're just going to go ahead and pull this up, copy it, and we're going to paste this at the include path location. And then finally, to get the version of the library, we're going to go ahead and do something similar. Uh, we go to the next tab, um, go up one location, and then go into libraries. And then here we're going to see that there is a Python 3.5m lib. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this guy. And we're going to paste it over here. Oops, I moved a little higher up. And we're going to go ahead and just put it here at the end. All right, so we go ahead and save this file. And at this point, we have configured our application. We, uh, you know, we've configured Material X and we've given them everything that it needs to go ahead and build. So go ahead and exit this. And now we have to go ahead and run the CMake command. What the CMake command is going to do, it is going to make, uh, it's going to generate other make files that are going to be the ones that are in charge of actually building the application. So I just run CMake dot from the root location. Let me make sure I show you guys where I am. I'm still at the root location of where I uh, expanded the repository. So I'm just going to go ahead and do CMake and then period. So this is going to go into your system and it's going to do a bunch of configurations. It's going to make sure that you have all the dependencies necessary in order to be able to build uh, this library and the bindings. So we can see that the system just finished. And now I should be able to just run make. And by doing make, this is going to start building. Right? You can see here right now the compiler is kicking in. And the first thing that it's doing, it is building you know, definitions, cpp.object, and then document. Um, so this is going to go for a little bit. It probably takes about mm, a couple of a minute or so, a couple of minutes. Uh, the first time you do it, at least, it takes a little bit longer. So while that is going, um, I'm just going to go ahead and talk a little quick of how you're probably going to have to use the same technique whenever you're building some you know some other library. Let's say that you're trying to use um, OpenColor.io or OpenImage.io. 
and you're trying to make it work with the embedded version of Python of your application. Uh, so the process is going to be very similar. Now, chances are each one of those projects is configured a little bit different. Some of those use CMake, other projects use ESCONs or other building systems. So make sure that you read the documentation of that project so that you can pro you know, properly determine what are the changes you need to make to you know, get the application to build properly uh, with the right version of Python. All right, so now the building process is continuing. And uh, right now, as you guys can see, the testing suite is being built. And uh, usually after the testing suite is built is when the Python bindings uh, should kick in. So we should, this kick, we should see this kick in at any minute. OK, so now, as you guys can see, everything has been built. So the next step now is to go ahead and install what we have built. And that is usually done by just typing make install which is going to print a whole bunch of things of what it's trying to do. And uh, at this point, it should be done. So one thing that I like to do always is test the module, right? Make sure that it works. So if I go over here and I'm going to start a brand new shell, you guys can see here, and I'm going to um, make this a little bit bigger so that it's easier to read. Go once more. All right. So now in here, I should be able to now do Python 3. Right, and we can see here that we're running the right version as before. And then let's go ahead and do import material x. And we can see that's imported. And then if we just type material x, it's going to tell us where it's currently finding it. Right, so so far we know we're good. We can do dear of material x to get its content, and we see that it's loading properly. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of that. And now we're going to go ahead and try Blender, because that is the final goal. We have to make sure that it runs properly in the Blender. So we're going to go ahead and start Blender by just go ahead and going into uh, the location where I have it right now. Uh -huh. All right, so if we go ahead and start this, and um, let's go ahead and pull this down. Make this a little bit easier to use. I wish this thing remembered a little bit you know, better how it changed. So if I go in here now and I just go ahead and do import material x, you know it's gonna fail. Why is it failing? Because chances are this module is not inside of the Python path that is currently active when you start the blender. So there's many different ways to fix this. It's not something we're going to cover right now. We're probably going to do another video on how to launch uh, your Python path to make sure that your application is able to find the modules you need. But for now, the best thing to do or the easiest thing to do is to just go ahead and add the Python path to the current shell just to test to make sure that everything's good. So I'm just going to do, um, I know the location of where the library was installed from up here if I scroll up. I'm just going to go ahead all the way to site packages and copy that. And then we're going to do export Python path equals, and then that should do it. So now we're going to go ahead and start Blender one last time, and we should see it work now. Let's go ahead and make this smaller. Make this up, and then just it's bigger and then just go ahead and import material x. Right? And if you do material x, you're going to see that it's loading from the right location. So there you have it. That's pretty much all you have to do in order to get um, the material x libraries to work against Blender. Um, like I said, this should work with pretty much every other library. You know, you might have to do this. Uh, you might get lucky and maybe the version that you build by default is compatible with the one of your DCC application. But for things to work better, I would highly recommend that you build the extensions or the bindings against the Python version that is embedded into your application. That is pretty much all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, if you liked it, please go ahead and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great day.